Good morning, everybody, and happy fifth Sunday of Lent. What a gorgeous day it is here in St. Louis. Oh my gosh, for as chilly as it was yesterday, today is just perfect. I am standing outside of St. Mary of Victories, which is a Hungarian parish, and I'm in downtown St. Louis. You can probably hear it's uh, pretty active behind me. There's a, a highway right over my head uh, this way. There's also some train tracks behind me. We are, as you can tell, we are not in the most uh, maybe desirable part of town. Uh, or it's just, you know, it's a, actually the Mississippi River is less than a mile east of us. And, but we wanted to check out this church. I have never been here before. I didn't even know that it was here, but it, I think it's gonna be very beautiful on the inside. And, and, and thanks be to God that they still have mass on Sundays here and it's on the um, registry of the National Historic Places. And if you see the cornerstone here with the Blessed Mother, uh, it says 1843. So let's go on in. We are going, the mass is at 11 p.m. And uh, I don't know if you can see it in the distance, but we've got our St. Louis Arch. I love the color blue that they use and you see here um, they did a lot of Latin in the mass as well and you've got in these panelings it's the life of Mary just so beautiful and then you've got St. Joseph over here and it says go to Joseph in there and these windows are beautiful I don't it's hard to Oh, there you go. You can see the color a little bit. It's like pink and then a little bit of yellow in this one. Our Lady Guadalupe in the corner. Just again, everywhere you look, look at this. It's so beautiful. Um, the wood work. It's beautiful. I love this statue of the Blessed Mother. Our crown, Our Lady of Victories. Pray for us. Um, the new St. Stephen here, and I believe this is a picture of St. Elizabeth of Hungary. It's also a lovely painting, I should say, not a picture. And again, these windows are just so beautiful. Like, even the confessional has these beautiful stained glass. Beautiful image of St. Stephen. Everywhere you look, something beautiful. Statue, a window that's got blue coming in behind it. The stations are also quite beautiful with the paintings. See who we've got down here. Okay, that looks like Saint Anthony, Saint Anne, and then this is Mother Cabrini. Oh, look at this—a little grotto to Our Lady of, well, not a little grotto, kind of a big grotto to Our Lady of Lourdes back here. It's lovely. And then we've got 
my girl St. Therese here. Got a beautiful window above her. This church needs our prayers. St. Louis is doing a reconstruction or a reconfiguring of parishes. Uh, it sounds like this parish will remain open, but may not have mass every week. Again, a beautiful window. And St. Jude. I even love that we've got Mary standing over us in the back on the choir loft. And oh, look at the beautiful organ in the background. And then even on the ceiling painting, there's Lord, Our Lady of Lords up in the corner. This is Jim Hooper, who oh. led the music today here at this beautiful parish, and he's going to give us a little information about it. Absolutely. So, here, let's stand. Okay, let's sure. Stand. So this is the second oldest church in the city of St. Louis. It was built in 1843, and that's about 30 years after the uh, Louisiana Purchase. So the Diocese of St. Louis at that time wasn't an archdiocese yet. The Diocese of St. Louis went up to the Canadian border and out to the Rockies. Real frontier time. Um, the old cathedral parish was overflowing with people and a lot of Germans were coming into St. Louis at that time to do work and various things. Um, so uh, money was raised uh, by the bishop to build this place. This land was actually, the land that this was built on was actually where the first territorial governor of Missouri lived. Cornerstone was laid in 1843 and it was just this rectangle part just the word the six windows on. And then about 25 years later, they built this transept and the sanctuary in the bell tower. Mm -hmm. So it was added on over time. So uh, all of the artwork and woodwork and all of it is original. The painting and stuff, not the paintings themselves, but the decorative stuff was refreshed in the, in the 80s, I think, when Cardinal Burke was here. It's absolutely gorgeous. So it's consecrated. We also have in separate relic reliquaries um, the True Cross with stones from Golgotha, the crown of thorns, and the sponge that Jesus took the, the wine from. Uh, a pretty rare relic of a fragment of Mary's veil and Joseph's cloak. So we bring those out, as well as St. Jude and Simon, Simon and Jude in the back. Um, the Guadalupe altar came from another church. Uh, 1928, and it has St. Timothy. So, so feel it when you come in here. What a glorious church! What a what a find that we came here today for Sunday Mass. It was just such a beautiful Mass and a special Mass because their pastor was actually coming back to visit. So it just everybody was uh, in a very celebratory mood, and it's just beautiful and. I, please pray for this church, St. Mary of Victories, that they may can continue on. That's just gorgeous, and there's so much history here. So let's pray together in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I was praying before the Blessed Sacrament and greeting the five wounds of Jesus, at each salutation, I felt a torrent of graces gushing into my soul, giving me a foretaste of heaven and absolute confidence in God's mercy. And Jesus said to me, If my death has not convinced you of my love, what will? God filled my soul with the interior light of a deeper knowledge of him as supreme goodness and supreme beauty, I came to know how very much God loves me. Dear God, give me the strength to bear my crosses patiently and to offer up my sufferings in union with my crucified Savior and his mother, Our Lady of Sorrows. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God's mercy is so great. May we just celebrate that with, with all of our hearts and never, never despair.
just to know the great love that God has for each one of us and his great mercy. So God bless you on this uh, beautiful Sunday. And we, tomorrow, uh, the priest here kept using the word passion tide as we are in this passion tide and we're moving towards Holy Week. So let us just, you know, just give everything we can to Jesus during this time and, and focus on him and all that he's done for us. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on the fifth Monday of Lent. God bless you. Bye-bye.